But then this next verse is a crazy verse. This verse to me, I, I, I've looked at it for a long time in my life and I went, surely there's a misprint going on here. It says in verse five, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, I'm sure if I wrote that, which I didn't, I would have written it this way. God, if you're going to prepare a table, that's awesome. But I, I think the verse really needs to read this way. You prepare a table before me in your presence. Smoke the enemies. And prepare a table in your presence. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. And now I'm in the presence of God at my table. That's not what it says. There is something so powerful in this tonight, and I hope that we see it. God says, I'm going to prepare a table before you. And I'm going to do it right in the middle of the conflict. I'm going to prepare the table in the middle of the chemo ward, in the middle of your family cracking up, in the middle of the stress, in the middle of the circumstance, in the middle of the difficulty, in the middle of whatever you're fighting against externally or internally, I'm putting the table right in the middle of all of it. And if we can see that tonight, something really, really powerful will happen. Let me kind of break this down for us in a way that I think we'll remember better than just seeing it on the page. It's as if God Almighty said to you, I prepared a table for two. Now that's awfully close to you. And you've been eyeing that Danish roll for a minute. And I respect your restraint. But it might pay off good for you in a minute. I want to prepare a table for you. In the presence, I'm not saying you're my enemy, but you are right now, and you are, and you are, and you are, and you are. You are my troubles, and my problems, and my stressor. You are trying to stab me in the back. You're saying things about me that aren't true. You're trying to cut me. And right in the middle of it, the God of heaven said, Louis, have a seat. I prepared a table for you. Can you imagine this, God Almighty? Have a seat. Are you thirsty? Let me get you some water. Oh, I can do it like the waiter at the restaurant. Yeah. Amazing. I'll have some too, although I'm not thirsty because I am the living water. <laughs> no, don't talk for that. That was terrible. W would you like? I have a, a little charcuterie sampler. <laughs> it's meat and cheese, bro. <laughs> would you like uh, some fruit? Some... I mean, A, God's not chintzy. Hi. Have a great. No, he's like, let's eat. And it's a table for two. What does this mean? It means that God wants an intimate relationship with you. He wants a, he wants a relationship with you, and he doesn't promise to minimize your enemies. He doesn't promise to wipe out your enemies. He just promises to put a table for you in the presence of your enemies. A table for two. And, and the most powerful thing about it, because you're like, what's on the table? You know, I mean, what, what, what is all that stuff? And, and the thing about it is, it's not about what's on the table. It's about who's at the table. I'm like, oh, I like that God isn't on the whole 30. Praise God. I knew he would come through for me. But not about... What God gave me is about that God wants to sit with me. Yeah. 
But <clears throat> here's, the, here's the weird part. Here's the crazy thing. No, it's not often you eat a carrot and a Danish at the same time, but it's pretty good. Let me try again. A lot, a lot, a crunch, a little sweet. Mmm, very good. I feel good, I feel bad. <laughs> crazy part is how quick the enemy can pull up a chair at your table.